In this quick tip, we're going to talk about how you can render out images right in the canvas with the Mesh Render node. All right, so let's say I'd like to render out a preview of this wooden frame wall material here. So what I can do is go into Quick Search, type in Mesh Render to bring up the Mesh Render node, bring that in here, and you can see we have a couple of input pins here. So first of all, we have the mesh that we can bring in. So now you can connect a mesh input into this pin here, or if we click on the node to go to its properties, we can go to the mesh input in the graph object editor. And in this case, I'm gonna bring in the high resolution sphere for a nice sphere material preview. Now to make it easy for me to supply the material information to the mesh render node, I'm gonna bring us into link category mode by clicking on this link in the toolbar here. And that's gonna combine my like connections together, all the material information into one easy connection. And I can just connect that to the material input in the mesh render node. And right away you can see, we now have the material applied to that sphere in our render. Now what I can do is I can click on the output pin here to see what my render is going to give me. And you can see it's applying an alpha channel here, as well as the mesh with the texture applied. And so if I scroll to the top of our parameters here, you can see that I can change the camera by dragging this little circle here. And it's really, really responsive. We're generating 2K renders here very, very quickly. And now notably, you can see it's quite dark here at the moment. So what I can do is go to the different lighting attributes that we have. I'm gonna to go to my image-based lighting and I can just bring up the brightness. Now, in addition to image-based lighting, we also have three built-in lights as well. And I can choose between a point light and a directional light. And then I can increase the intensity here. And then we can change the direction to really customize how we get our lighting in our render. You can also change the color of the lights here as well. Now, in addition to lighting, we also have lots of material and scene controls. For instance, I can change the camera type from perspective to orthographic. I also have control over the orientation down here as well as the field of view. And we can control the object as well. So I can change the scale. I can translate it around in the frame. I also have control over the UVs. It's really powerful. Now, let's take a look at another way on how we can use the mesh render node. So here's an example where I'm using the mesh render node to generate five different images of the same object from different angles, as well as generating this composition here. So if I click on this to bring this into the image viewer, and I set the image viewer as the center view, you can see we have this contact sheet here of an asset that I'm working on. Now what's great about this is it's all procedural. So if I wanna make a change to the bike, for instance, if I bring in my layering project here, and perhaps I wanna change the color from maybe a blue to maybe a green color. So I'm gonna bring this green color in, hit OK, save the project, then I'm gonna switch back to my view here. You can see that the color of the bike has changed as well as all of our renders from all the different views in our contact sheet. So it's really powerful to have those procedural capabilities with a mesh render node right in the canvas. Thanks for checking out this quick tip on the mesh render node. By the way, fun fact, the mesh render node was created entirely in Instamat using the Instamat Atom Graph. It's pretty amazing what you can build with all these tools, and we look forward to seeing what you create. Now, if you're interested in diving deeper into Instamat's nodes and features, you can check out the YouTube channel. We have a series called Focusing On, which slows down the pace and goes much more into detail. And if you're brand new to Instamat, check out our Getting Started series to give you everything you need to know to get up and running. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.